Today is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. It's also the feast day of St. Louis, the ninth king of France, so the second oration, secret post-communion, finding your mass in, on his feast day today. Also, we'll be having a parish potluck. That parish potluck will be on Sunday, September 22nd. It'll go from, it says 11 to 1 p.m., but it'll be after mass. We'll have mass that morning, then after the mass, we will have the potluck. So on Sunday, the parish potluck will be on September 22nd. The epistle of read for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is taken from the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to another, so that you do not the things that you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanness, immodesty, luxury, idolatry, witchcrafts, enmities, Contentions, emulations, wraths, quarrels, dissensions, sex, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which I foretell you, as I have foretold you, that they who do such things shall not obtain the kingdom of God. But the, spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, patience, benignity, goodness, longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, chastity, Against such there is no law, and that they who are Christ have crucified their flesh with the vices and concupiscences. And the Holy Gospel. This Gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 24 through 33. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will sustain the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, be not solicitous for your life, what you shall eat, nor for your body, what you shall put on. Is not the life more than the meat, and the body more than the raiment? Behold the birds of the air, for they neither sow, nor do they reap, nor gather into barns. And your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not you of much more value than they? And which of you, by taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? And for raiment, why are you solicitous? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They labor not, nor do they spin. But I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed as one of these. And if the grass of the field which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, God doth so clothe, how much more are you, O ye of little faith? Be not solicitous, therefore, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith we shall be, we, we be clothed? For after all these things do the heathen seek. For your Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Seek ye therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Is not the life more than the food? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Savior led his disciples step by step on the way of the path of perfection. At first, he simply taught them to avoid evil, but today he teaches them to do good. He takes them into a mountain so that from that elevation, they might look down upon and comprehend more clearly the vanity of the world and the nothingness of temporal goods. They were yet too much occupied with gaining a livelihood and making provisions for the future. And these worldly excessive concerns are great obstacles to the ways of perfection. In order to impress upon them the necessity of seeking first the kingdom of God, he asked them, is not the life more than the food? It says in the book of Genesis, God created man to his own image. To the image of God, he created him. Well, the repetition of a phrase in sacred scripture always indicates something important. We do not bear the marks of the Creator's hand in common with all of the other creatures in the world, but rather we are made in His image and likeness. As God, as St. Augustine says, as God pervades the whole universe and is in every creature, so also is the soul in every part of the body as in the world. St. Bernard says, the Holy Trinity has created a trinity in the human soul to his own likeness in giving to it three powers, the will, the memory, and the understanding. God is a pure spirit, and so also is our soul. 
God is immortal, and so is our soul. He is just, he is good, he's merciful. All these and other virtues the soul may acquire, although not in the same high degree as God, but must acquire these things. No one knew better the value of a human soul than did our blessed Savior, the incarnate God. When it was lost through the sin of Adam, our Lord redeemed souls at a great price. St. Paul says, you are bought with a great price. You are redeemed. St. John Chrysostom says, so dear is the salvation of a single soul that on account of it, God became man and suffered much. Our soul is so precious that our Redeemer gave his own life gave his own life in exchange for our soul. It says in the book of St. John, he was that good shepherd who giveth his life for his sheep. St. Paul understood well this love of God when he wrote to the Galatians. I live in the faith of the Son of God who loved me and delivered himself for me. Our divine Savior fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah said, he hath delivered his soul unto death and was reputed with the wicked, and he hath borne the sins of many. He died for each and every soul individually and for mankind in general. But the value of a soul is the greater, is all the greater, because man only has one. He has one soul. And if that one soul is lost, the lost is irreparable. When anything is precious, it's rarity adds to its worth. For example, we know that diamonds are precious, but if there were just one diamond in the world, just one, who could estimate its value? Well, we know how precious the human soul is, but its value is immeasurably increased because we only have one. We have two feet, We have two hands, we have two eyes, we have two ears. But we have a single soul. If a man has thousands of dollars, he may, at his pleasure, risk a few on some speculation. But if he had one dollar, one single dollar, in which to procure the necessities of life, how carefully he would preserve and look after it. And how foolish it is to be so reckless, to be so careless with the one precious soul, to thrust it so blindly into danger of every sort, as though one had hundreds of souls instead of just one. Our Lord prizes our souls much higher than we do. He left the 99 sheep in the desert, that is, he left his throne in heaven in the midst of a myriad of angels, in order to go search for the one that was lost, it is mankind, for our soul, our souls individually. He understood far better than we do the loss of one soul. Our Heavenly Father rejoices more over one sheep that is lost and found than over 99 sheep that have never gone astray. It says in the book of St. Matthew, It is not the will of your Father who is in heaven. Is it not the will of your Father in heaven that you should not be lost? In the sacred scripture, in the epistle of St. Paul to the Hebrews, he says, It is appointed for man once to die. Notice what St. Paul says. Once. Not many times. It is appointed for man once to die. If a man dies unhappily, his dreadful fate is sealed for all eternity. We are well convinced of this truth. No further proofs are needed about the value of a soul. But what is needed is more reflection, more practical resolutions. We have one heart which sends the life-giving blood through our veins and arteries. We have one life and how assiduous we are to, to preserve it. If a grave disorder attacks our health, if danger of death threatens this uncertain life of ours, we make every effort to save it. 
and we take every prescribed remedy, no matter how bitter or how disgusting. We submit to the fire, the caustic, the knife, even exile from family and friends if necessary. And yet, how many do not do the same for the soul? If a soul is lost, then everything's lost. And it's lost for eternity. We do not die three or four or five times so that by dying we can learn the practice and experience the art of dying well so that we can try again. Our immortal soul leaves the body in death only once. And in leaving the body, if it's lost, its loss is forever. There will be no excuse that at that moment that one can offer for not taking care of the one soul entrusted to our care by God. And the question our Lord asked, is not the life more than the food? What doth it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? Of what use to expand so much care and solicitude upon the perishable body and bestow so little thought upon an undying soul? We are to daily reflect seriously upon our eternal salvation and to take to heart the difference which exists between a corruptible body and an immortal soul. We should reflect frequently that we only have one. We have one soul given to us by God, a gift. The gift that God has given to us in life, it's the one soul by which we live. And this is an inexpressibly precious soul. We cannot get another one. It is the one precious soul given to us by the loving hands of God. He entrusted it to us so that we, may, we are to fulfill that which God wishes of us. This is the will of God, your sanctification. We are to adorn our soul with the precious jewels of the virtues, to preserve it in sanctifying grace so that we can bring it to the one true home that way God has planned for us, that one true home in the joys of paradise. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.